A wooden cylinder, wooden, wooden, wooden cylinder of mass M and length L has N turns of wire wrapped about it. Longitudinally, so that the plane of the wire loop contains the cylindrical axis. Okay. What is the least current, the smallest amount of current, through the loop that will prevent the cylinder from rolling down the plane inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal in the presence of a vertical magnetic field? Okay. So we're going to draw a couple pictures here to get an idea of what's going on. So we're going to start with... Uh, gravity. Actually, I'm going to draw this a little bit more extreme. That way the sine and cosine components will be a little bit more obvious. So this will be theta. And I'm going to copy and paste this because we're going to do one for gravity and we're going to do one for the um, magnetic torque. So let's see. We have gravity here. And it's going to pull down on this. So we're going to have force gravity pulling down. Now we can break up this gravitational component into F. I'm going to call this FGX. This is going to be FGY. Now we can use geometry to figure out what these components are with relationship to theta. But what I have memorized, just mnemonic, is FGX is going to be mg sine of theta. It's just that this is so common with the whole pl uh, block rolling down or falling down a um, uh, plane, inclined plane, they're going to see this mg sine theta. Now this is a ball, it's going to roll so you get more nuance here, but since we're talking about torque, it's going to work out just similar. Trust me on this one. At least, trust me so far. So we want to find torque, what's causing it to roll. So what's causing it to roll is we are going to have a radius R right there, a moment arm. And we're going to have a force FGX going down the, down the um, plane. So we're going to have a torque in that direction. Specifically, this torque is going to be written as R cross F, where this is cross product. Torque is a vector. And it's going to be perpendicular to R and F because that's what cross products do is it gives you a perpendicular vector. Um, but I prefer to think of torques in terms of clockwise and counterclockwise. Either way is fine as long as you got a conceptual understanding of what you're actually doing. So um, the cross product is a measure of perpendicular. So this is going to be RF. And I'm going to call this GX. So really... This would be a cross product between this moment arm and F going down. But since we're since cross product is a measure of perpendic how, how perpendicular two vectors are, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look at this as R um, cross F X plus R cross F Y. Now this is a little bit more nuanced. Um, then it's probably necessary. But what I'm saying here is we decompose this force gravity vector into x and y. The fgx is going to be perpendicular to r. fgy is going to be parallel. And since a cross product is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are, this one just disappears. Goes to zero. So what we really have here is just r, the moment arm, because it's the... Uh, Axis rotation here is actually going to be the contact point between the cylinder and the plane. And so we just have FGX, which becomes RMG sine of theta. So I know that has a lot of kind of background intuitive feels for something that a lot of people can just look at and be like, oh, RMG sine theta. So it is good to understand the nuance of what's going on back there, but you're right. A lot of people just skip straight to that step. Okay. So now we have another situation where we have our um, cylinder right here. And we have, I'm going to draw a little bit of perspective here, a copper wire going like this. And we have a magnetic field like so. 
So what's going to happen here is when we have a current flowing through a wire, what that current is, is it's charges moving through the wire. And those charges, moving charges in a magnetic field, are going to create a force. And that force is going to be represented as F equals, I'm going to write this out as QE plus QV cross B, because whenever I talk about forces on charges, this is usually the formula I go to. Um, there's no electric field mentioned, per se, so we're going to assume that it's a negligible. So that goes to zero, and we have QV cross B. Well, V cross B, we can take the per second, this is more mnemonic than uh, proof. We can take the per second of V, move it under the Q, we, therefore we get charges per second, which is the same as current. And so we get the formula, force is current linked to the wire cross B. And that is true. And we could actually do all this and do figure out the force here. We actually kind of will. So L cross B, I L cross B, L is the direction of that. So we got L, which is into the board, and B, the magnetic field, which is up. And so it's going to be L cross B going to be pointing outwards. And so what's going to happen here is there is going to be a force going outwards like this, horizontal. And that force is going to cause a torque going that direction. So it's going to be, it's going to try to make the plane of this coil of wire, which you can draw it like this. I'm going to do A for the area vector, which is the vector that is normal, perpendicular to the plane of the coil, straight up. It's going to try to align that with the magnetic field, which we say is vertical. So there's going to be a torque going that way. Not of nuance, we could do some more derivations. Long story short, the formula for this is going to be mu cross b, where mu is the magnetic moment, and it is a vector, cross magnetic field. Mu is going to be area um, times the current, cross b. The cross product um, can be thought of in this case as the sine of the theta between the two angles. And this theta right here is actually going to be the same as that theta. Um, you can figure that out through geometry, or you can look at it intuitively, where if we have a plane, like so, where this theta then equals zero, and that's the little coil of wire right there. It goes up, magnetic field goes up. Here we could also see that the angle between A and B would also be zero. So theta equals zero, theta equals zero. This angle right here is the same as that angle up there, which is the angle between the two vectors, the area vector, which again is the normal to the plane of the coil of wire. And B is um, the cross product of that is going to be sine of theta. Okay, so lots of talking, and we get I, A, B, sine of theta. All right, so lots and lots of backstory, but we pretty much are 90% done at this point. So this torque over here is going to cause it to roll down the inclined plane clockwise in our picture here. This torque over here is going to cause it to roll up the plane. And it's not necessarily up the plane, it's just to align the coil of wire with magnetic field, which causes which is right up, which is up the plane. As you can see here, it's coiled down. So if for some reason the coil of wire was like this, they would work together in the same direction. So that's what's going on here. Um, and so we can set these two equal to each other. 
And so I am going to say that R M G sine of theta, this is the torque causing our cylinder roll down the incline plane. I A B sine theta, this is the torque causing it to roll up the plane, which another way of phrasing that is, is it causing the um, normal vector to the area of the coil to align with the magnetic field, which happens to be up the plane. We are looking for the minimum current, I think. Um, least current. So rearranging this for I. Oh, um, area, the area of this coil is going to be the diameter right here, 2R times L, which is the length of that. So A equals 2 times R times L. Is that reasonable? I'll say that's reasonable. So we have R M G equals area times 2R times length times B. There we go. Now the but what I'm saying here is that the, the radius cancels, which is convenient, because I don't think they give it to us. So I equals mass times gravity over 2 length times magnetic field. So let's take a look, make sure we got most of what we need, wooden cylinder, ah, end turns, totally forgot that, totally forgot that. So over here, this is for one turn, so we're going to multiply the bottom by n because I should have had an n up here. The more loops we have, effectively the more area each, the, the more loops we have, the more total area we're going to have for the torque to act on. So I just forgot the n there. Current equals mass times gravity over 2LB times n. Hope that helped.